If I had to pick a name, one person to sum up my thoughts about this week's episode of NXT, that's easy. Tommaso Ciampa. Hello all MRBers and welcome to another video with me Mike McRock. I am one half of the McRock and Bolt wrestling review show. Right now I'm going to deliver to you my review for this week's edition of WWE NXT the March 7th 2018 edition. Now usually when I come on here and talk about the things that happened on the show I'll start with the thing that happened first and then second, third, and so on and so on. For this week's episode of NXT, I'm going to talk about what I think was the best thing that happened, and then I'll start talking about the not-so-good things that happened on the show, and then give my overall thoughts on it and my rating as well. However, with that said, before I get into what happened on this week's episode of NXT, I'm going to talk about what pretty much everyone in the YWC and IWC is talking about and it is the announcement of NXT bringing in a secondary championship the North American Championship and there's going to be a ladder match that will take place at NXT New TakeOver New Orleans it's going to be EC3 coming in Ricochet Adam Cole, baby, Killian Dane, Lars Sullivan, but my pick, the Velveteen Dream. That's happening. It's a, it's pretty much official. And here's the thing. I would be good for this title if this would replace the UK Championship because there's just absolutely no need for that title. Just drop it. You can give the North American Championship to Pete Dunne if you wanted to. But I get what NXT is doing. This is a big announcement. I see a lot of potential for some of these opponents. I'll probably get into more of a breakdown as to who I think would benefit more to have the North American Championship. When I get to my predictions for TakeOver New Orleans... Let's talk about the things that actually happened on this week's show. To me, the best thing about this week's episode of NXT happened roughly around the second half of the uh, show, which is pretty much the best half of the show anyway. And that was when Tommaso Ciampa come out. He comes out with no music. And what happened was, was that he came out with this crutch. And uh, he had a microphone in hand. He was in the ring. And when he was about to talk, the fans just booed him. And he drops the mic. He picks it up again. As soon as he tries to talk again, the fans boo him. The dude did not have to say a word whatsoever. And his action spoke louder than words. Did this guy ever get the point across? This was... This was really good. To me, this was the best thing on the show. And uh, basically, after that, you know, you have uh, Tommaso Ciampa just walk out the ring, like, slowly. And I thought he was going to, like, going to attack someone in the audience. And he sees this one guy with a sign with the big emoji logo and uh, Johnny Gargano written on it. He takes the sign. He rips it up. He throws it in the ring. He takes his crutch and just... Pounds the sign on the mat. This was really good. Uh, I can't emphasize enough how really good this segment was. Because this is Tommaso Ciampa. A guy who I knew had that psycho killer in him. And they finally played on it. And he's actually getting heat. Real, legit heat from the crowd. Normally, the crowd tends to cheer for the bad guys because 
it's just cool to cheer for the bad guys. And, but with Tomasa Chapa here, they actually give him, they actually give you a reason to hate the guy because he's the guy that ended Johnny Gargano's career. I like this. This segment worked on so many levels. Uh, it, it was really good. Like I said, I can't emphasize it enough. The, the dude just did not need to say a word at all. To me, this was so far. I, I know we're really early in the year, but this is NXT's best promo of 2018 so far. That's that's easily the best thing about the show. The the real highlight. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to seeing this match now. I am really legit. This is the one segment that actually pulled me in when I and I was already pulled in when Tommaso Ciampa betrayed Johnny Gargano and all that stuff, and when he cost Johnny Gargano the title match a couple of weeks ago. But this segment, this segment, 100. Percent and beyond sold me on this match. I know it's ha it's inevitable. It's happening. How NXT is going to get to that point? Well, be be careful. Don't rush it. For the love of God, if you have it at NXT Takeover New Orleans, their big blow off match, I'm going to be disappointed on the build up because <sighs> you're rushing into it way too early. I think you should. Like I said, I mentioned this last week, I think you should hold it off till the next TakeOver after TakeOver New Orleans. That's all I'll say about that. That was the best thing on the show. Um, to me, the second best thing is probably the opening match on the show. Uh, and that was the Dusty Rose Tag Team Tournament Classic first match. It was the Authors of Pain versus TM61 first round match. Here's the thing, I actually thought that Team 6-1 was going to win this match because of the hype NXT has presented to us on their show, uh, giving us their biography, part 1 and 2, but before they returned, uh, after take after a TakeOver Philadelphia, I do believe, and it seemed like that NXT has been grooming Team 6-1 as the next team to challenge undisputed air for the tag team titles and then we get to this match and i didn't mind the match i thought it was fine it was a little 50 50 I mean, it was borderline 50 50 where team 6-1 was just almost getting as much offense as alp was that kind of throws off a bit of dynamics i think alp probably could have got a little bit more offense in this match but the end result here, AOP goes over TM61. Now, I understand why the Authors of Pain won. I, th I think that NXT wants to establish that when a tag team returns, they don't need to win every single match, which I like. To me, that tells a bit of a better story. But you probably could have had a better story if you had a redemption story. Because the last time these two teams faced off, it was in the finals a couple of years ago in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Tournament Classic where Team 6-1 lost. This could have been a good redemption story when they come back a year later and they beat AOP. It, it would have a good feeling. It, it would just have a good vibe and a good feeling and a feel-good moment for Team 6-1. And you don't necessarily need to have TM61 to win this tournament, but it, it would have been nice to have AOP uh, give TM61 their moment to shine in this match. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't do that, but in the same time, I understand why you wanted AOP to beat TM61, because when you look at this match on paper, who do you believe to win this match more? Two big bad behemoth badasses, or two smaller dudes. I go with the two big badasses. To me, that's a lot more. It's a lot more believable if they won, in my opinion. But 
if you kind of work this match to the point where if you want to believe that TM61 will legit beat ALP at least give this match a little bit more time and then that's something that they could have done as well but overall I didn't mind the match uh, TM61 losing I thought was a bit of a surprise but I I sort of get it but not really uh, I just don't know what my real thoughts lie on this segment this portion of the show uh, Alistair Black versus Killian Dane. Okay, this is where I start to get into the negatives of the show. I'm just going to warn you. I wasn't really a fan of this match. I don't know what it was, but I, here's the thing. I really thought that Alistair Black versus Killian Dane would be a really good match. And then we, when we get to it, it just didn't feel right at all. There was no in-ring chemistry with the two of them. Then the match just didn't jive, and it didn't flow very well. There was a lot of spots where it felt really telegraphed, and at the end, it was a little predictable as to who would win. I think the right guy won, Alistair Black goes over, but there was something completely off with this match, and I just can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe it was the lack of chemistry between the two of them. I just didn't find this match interesting at all. I just didn't. I'm sorry, but to me, this is... Both Alistair Black and Killian Dane's worst match I've seen them on NXT. Uh, and this is to establish Alistair Black as the number one contender. And I wish they would have had a better match to pull that off. I'm just saying. And you also get Bianca Belair versus... I think her name is Drew Renee or something like that. Local talent, whatever. This was pretty much done in a minute. Blinky missed it. It was a pointless match. We get a couple of backstage segments. One with uh, Lacey Evans. That was pretty much pointless. Shayna Baszler comes into it as well. That was pretty much pointless. You know, she was talking about uh, Ember Moon not giving her an answer to uh, another match. And here's the thing. I hope Ember Moon says no because Shayna Baszler already lost twice to Ember Moon. If this is NXT leading up to a third match between the two of them, you know what? I'm just going to rip it to shreds come my prediction video if it happens. I'm going to rip it to shreds and you're you're not going to like what I'm going to talk about. Well, that, that actually kind of depends if you're not a fan of this match happening again. That's if. So... That's pretty much this show in a nutshell. This man, uh, I thought the show overall was like a filler kind of show. It, it was a predictable show. Maybe besides the opening match, the Alistair Black and Killian Day main event was predictable. Bianca Belair versus Jabber, that was predictable. The, you have one good segment on the show involving Tomasa and Chapa, and that's pretty much on another level in itself, and the rest just didn't quite measure up to it. I'm going to give the show a 5 out of 10. If you saw this week's episode of NXT, what did you think about it? Feel free to leave those comments right here in the comment section below, and you can also hit that subscribe button down below this video as well, hit the notification bell as well, and you can become an MRB or on this wrestling review show.